that's it. In this third and final Reaper Surround recording for now, um, it'll also be the shortest one, I want to show you how to create a dedicated LFE track and route it correctly. Um, a reminder, you should only be using this for real low frequency effects. This is for cinematic type mixing here. This is not meant to be based management. You're not send, meant to be sending all the low frequency stuff there. Your main channels are assumed to be full range enough to handle that. And it's only for those select moments where some low frequency sweetener or rumble or something will add value. And in that case, you want to route this correctly. Now, I might be wrong, but I'm not aware of an easy way to route stuff directly to that specific channel on the output. But also, if you are you setting up the correct stems and groups, you don't want it to go directly to the output either. So this is still my previous project with only the few tracks. Remember, you are going to, in addition to the submaster, have your at least dialogue effects and music group tracks. And the most common thing would be for an LFE track to go to your sound effect, your effects stem first. Um, and to do that, well, to, to show you how to do that now, I'm going to do that via the submaster, but the same logic applies if you've got those extra routing levels. I'm going to create a track here and call it LFE and see what the dice of random colors gives us today. Excellent. Um, and this one, again, as before, you have to change it to be a six track output. Now this is a bit weird for a, a mono um, LFE track, but again, you have to address that one channel in a six channel um, output. And again, untick the master send, and again, send it to your sub master. And again, make it a multi-channel source. And as before, you're going to add resurround pan here but this is going to be slightly different. And hopefully there's somebody out there that can tell me of a much slicker way to do this. This definitely works stably, but it is a bit of a cumbersome workaround. Now the input channel is going to be one only. I am going to go for the ITU 5.1 again, um, and I am resetting it. The pack Kupana is not going to have any effect because I'm going to mute all of those channels. So you see over here, I'm only going to select solo on the LFE. If you can see, it's a little bit bigger. So I've soloed the LFE. I um, go over here to LFE and make sure that that's at unity gain. So now when I play any signal, it's only going to go out to the LFE track. And to demonstrate that, I ex extracted the, the low frequency part of the um, blitzstone over here, and I'm just going to dump that a couple of times here on my um, LFE track and you won't hear it because there's no fold down but you can see the correct channel channel 4 lighting up there and just a reminder how to put the fold down on enable the plugin go to master track swap these two guys around and now you should hear it and I've forgotten to do something. So this would work, but the best convention in terms of LFE tracks is only to have the, the low frequency content on there rather than full range content. And that is also a good opportunity to talk about processing on your other surround tracks. So you'll see this is a one in, six out. So say you've got your stereo track over here that I've muted, um, if you wanted to apply some equalization to the stereo, it would make sense to do that with a stereo EQ before it goes to the resurround pan. If you have some kind of surround sound processing plugin, it would make sense to put that after the resurround pan. So it depends on the number of channels you need to process and how that pr plugin processes sound where you put that. So in this case with the LFE, if I go to these effects, it would make sense. And let's just put a a uh, high pass, I mean a low, high pass, low pass filter here, but it would make sense for this one to be swapped around. You can see I've just swapped the two around. So we first have the high pass filter, then resurround, because I'm not quite sure 
and how this behaves, it'll probably have to do that on multiple channels. So this is the logic that makes sense to me. This is a high pass. I'm only going to use the low pass filter here and I'm going to set it to 120 hertz. Usually isn't much higher than that. Sometimes it's low, something like 80 hertz. So this is now only going to let the frequencies below 120 hertz through onto this LFE track in your project. Use this but use it sparingly. Remember from the previous video with our fill downs, it would be very common for this guy to be gone and the LFE just to be lost. And in that case, your mix still has to make sense and not be bad without that. So it's only for those key moments where on a big playback system like in a cinema, it adds a little bit extra value. So that's an LFE track. If you can think of something else you want me to figure out for 5.1 Reaper projects, I'll do that. I might do a fourth video where we look at basic 7.1 setup because you can use this in our Big Bob classroom. Um, but it's pretty much the same as the 5.1 stuff, just with eight channel widths and with the resurround pan set to 7.1 ITU.